Well, yeah. I'll, I'll, I will say again, thank you very much, Lindsay, for that lovely introduction. And happy breastfeeding week to everybody. I'm so happy to join with you all at Pavy Point to celebrate breastfeeding week, and in particular, to celebrate the fact that there's a growing knowledge of the importance of breastfeeding. I'm delighted also to be with you for the launch of Pavy Women's video and information booklet for traveller women wishing to breastfeed their babies. I would like to commence by acknowledging the significant work that has been done by Pavy Point and Primary Health Care Project across the country to support and encourage breastfeeding among traveller women. I would also like to welcome the HSE partners who are present, including MENA, and who, by their presence, make a supportive statement of their commitment to working with travellers to increase breastfeeding rates in the travelling community. I'm deeply aware and indeed concerned that in a modern Ireland where the benefits of breastfeeding have now been proven beyond argument, just 3% of traveller women feel encouraged, enabled or empowered to breastfeed their babies. This stands in stark contrast to European Roma communities where breastfeeding is the cultural norm, indeed sometimes identified among Roma women as an integral part of their cultural identity. Breast milk is the perfect food for a baby. There is nothing else that compares with it. It gives the baby the very best start in life and the benefit will go on right through its life and the mother's life. It contains all the nutrients the baby needs to ensure that it will be healthy and thrive, grow at the appropriate pace and be the right weight. And the breastfed baby is protected from becoming obese in later in life. Through the breast milk, the mother passes on all her immunities to protect the baby's health. We're so indebted, as Lizzie said, to the United Nations, the World Health Organization and UNICEF for all the scientific research they have done so that we now know so much of what's the very best start we can give a baby. They have found that breastfeeding the baby exclusively with nothing added for the first six months of its life brings lifelong health benefits and the baby can then go on to complementary solids and continue to be breastfed or have ordinary milk. They recommend that this continue for a year or longer if the, baby wish, if the mother wishes. When I was young, my mother knew so many traveller women who visit her when they came to our area, in near Ballandine, North Galway, South Mayo. Uh, particularly, I remember her friendship with the Mohan women. They all breastfed their babies, as did my mother, and all the women of the country, and probably the cities too. We were seven children, and we were two and two and a half years apart, as was the case with all the children at school. So it seems women breastfed for a year before weaning, and that acted as a contraceptive. That was how it was up until the mid forties. And then shamefully, all that was lost as people themselves and medical people gave way to the pressure of the lie of the advertising that said formula was the best. That was such a tragedy. By the time of the 1970s, about 30 years later, when I came to breastfeed my children, almost all babies were bottle fed. Midwives had disappeared and doctors and nurses in the hospital knew nothing about breastfeeding and could give no help to the few women who were breastfeeding. Fortunately, we were able to get help by way of information from a book on breastfeeding and some members of La Lesh League. We in Ireland had and still have the lowest breastfeeding percentage in Europe, as I think, let's say 46 to 60 in general, and even lower at about 3% among traveller women. Thankfully, now because of the work of the World Health Organization, this percentage is getting better. Midwives are back 
and the HSE has made commitments and many of the hospitals, but regretfully not all, are breastfeeding friendly. There is wonderful work being done by support organisations such as Pavi Mothers at Pavi Point, La Leche League, Quidju, Friends of Breastfeeding and Bonnie Baha who all help new breastfeeding mothers by giving information and by meeting up to help each other and have latching on morning and have a chat. Then there is the wonderful Breastfeeding Law Group who are highlighting the unethical marketing of formula by the baby feed manufacturing corporations and they're campaigning to get compliance with the World Health Organization code. All women from the travelling and settled communities have to continue to spread the information of the vital importance of breastfeeding and show support for each other and solidarity. When we've latching on day at Oris and Uchtron for Breastfeeding Week at the beginning of October, hundreds of mothers come, all proudly feed their babies and resolve to share this great joy and practice of breastfeeding by campaigning for the normality of breastfeeding at their homes, in their places of work, at the shops, at restaurants and any other place they need to be to get on with their lives, with the support of their families and their communities. All expectant mothers are in touch with the medical service of the health service and this is where the preparation for birth and breastfeeding must be started. The doctor, the obstetrician, the midwife have a duty to inform women of the benefits of breastfeeding and prenatal classes should give the information on the preparation of the breasts for breastfeeding and all that mothers need to expect and know to make life easy and also how they can deal with any difficulties that might arise. For instance, if there's a blocked milk duct, massaging the milk duct and the milk passage all the way from its source, from the armpit to the nipple, will re-establish the flow. In a survey by the breastfeeding group Bonnie Baha, they found that many mothers could not get the help in hospital with breastfeeding they needed, as there were not enough midwives and they could not give them enough time or help them establish the latching on successfully. If we are to succeed, this must change. We must have enough midwives in the health service to ensure good practice. I think it is absolutely necessary that the midwife is fully available to the mother and latching on takes place as soon as is possible after the baby is born and that she's available to the mother in hospital and later at home to deal with any help that may be needed until breastfeeding is comfortably established. Knowledge about breastfeeding should of course be part of a doctor's training. Regretfully there are some rare times where the medical reasons for breastfeeding are not suitable. There are times when a mother has some rare condition such as galactosemia which will be identified when the baby is screened after being born then breastfeeding will not be suitable and the baby must be fed alternatives to breast milk, uh, such as breast, alternatives such as soy milk. As the incidence of galactosemia is high, it must be obligatory that the result of the screening by blood test is made available to the mother as soon as possible so that unless the result indicates there is a problem, she can breastfeed with confidence without delay. This is an area for research. It cannot be denied that lack of appropriate and accessible information about breastfeeding is a key reason for the unacceptably low percentage of breastfeeding rates among traveller women. Re majority of traveller women receive their health information from the traveller groups and the establishment of Pavi Mothers, a website for travelling women by traveller women has built a critical bridge between the travelling community and the health services, so necessary to a positive pregnancy and childbirth experience. Lack of privacy, lack of space, lack of encouragement from peers 
and fear of offending others can make breastfeeding very difficult for new mothers. It is said that it takes a whole community to rear a child and everyone should become aware that as it's the mother's human right and the baby's birthright that baby be fed with human milk, that they should be supported in this by everyone. Of course, it's also the greatest bonding in the family and it is also the easiest. All trouble-free and cost-free, no bottles to be sterilised, no formula to be made up or getting up in the middle of the night for the father either to heat a bottle and then knowing you are giving your cherished baby the very best start in life. May I at this point thank and commend all those involved in the creation and development of Pavi Mothers. In the three years since your establishment, you have, I know, been a source of assistance and support to many traveller women seeking access to maternity services within our health system. Indeed, you have provided a vital link between the travelling community and those badly needed services. Today, we celebrate an important milestone in your work as we gather to launch your videos of traveller women talking directly about their experience of breastfeeding, along with a booklet which provides information on breastfeeding to traveller women. These are all most vital developments, which I am confident will lead to many more traveller women being enabled to make informed decisions around breastfeeding their babies. May I thank and congratulate Pavi Mothers on this uplifting occasion and wish you every success as you continue your generous and inspiring work. I send my very best wishes to all pregnant women and new mothers. Remember, all our ancestors were breastfed. Let us bring back breastfeeding. Thank you.